Um, I think, you know, China has a lot to show for it because they've sent us everything that we're buying, basically, uh, except for some disposables and foodstuffs and um, some caterpillar tractors. We're buying so much of what we consume from overseas. The <clears throat> U.S. Uh, produced in 2008 um, 1.6 billion or 1.6 trillion dollars worth of goods. That was what we manufactured, 1.6 trillion. We imported 2.5 trillion. So we're, we're importing so much more than we're producing. It's absolutely stunning how much of our money is just leaving our country. Um, and yet people, people in the Washington policy community don't see this as being a problem. And not yet. They're starting to wake up. They're slowly waking up to this. There, um, there are a lot of people who have said a lot about uh, the plight of American manufacturing. Brian O'Shaughnessy is um, this guy. He's the CEO of Revere Copper, and they're the oldest industrial company in the country. They uh, were formed. Uh, created by Paul Revere. And they had a plant that they had to close down in New Bedford, Massachusetts. New Bedford is home to the Pequot and uh, Ishmael in the great uh, book written by Herman Melville. And they had to close that plant. He said, Brian O'Shaughnessy, who works for Paul Revere's company, said, if Paul Revere were alive today, he would be just storming the country, saying, the Chinese are coming, the Chinese are coming. This is what he says to me. And he says, what do you think? Do you think, why? He says, if he, he was yelling, the English are coming, the English are coming, you think people would just go back home and say, ah, ah. He, says, well, I, he says, I can't understand why Americans aren't reacting. Because we're losing our way of life. Um, and I hear this sort of thing a lot. This is just, this is just typical of, of what I hear from people. And it's, you know, beautiful and colorful. Then I hear from Mike, uh, this guy David Farr. He's the CEO of Emerson Electric. You know Emerson Electric? A big company. This is his quote from uh, a couple months ago. The federal government is doing everything in its power and capability to destroy U.S. manufacturing. This is a guy who employs a lot of Americans. And then he says, I'm not going to hire anyone in the United States. I'm moving. They are doing everything possible to destroy jobs. If I was the government, I would call this guy up. I'd say, God, you know, tell us, how, how are we doing this? How can we, how can we change the situation so we're not destroying all these jobs? But we have a government that's just kind of sitting on its hands. I, I cover manufacturing from Washington, D.C. There are not many reporters covering manufacturing in Washington. See, I can assure you that just that's a rare, rare thing. And so, you know, I go into these hearings, I go into press conferences, and I, you know, listen to the the debate, and um, you just don't get it. They don't get it. No, most people in the country get it. They understand this. They go shopping. They kind of get it. And, and you know, we, as a journalist, I'm always just kind of. People don't know I'm a journalist, but I'm not just in the public, but you know, I'm always asking questions. And I get uh, people to, to just talk to talk about this. And uh, so so I was a friend of mine turned 50 and he invited me to go on a motorcycle trip. Uh, on Harley Davidson motorcycle. So I said, okay, okay. So we started in San Francisco and we drove to Las Vegas. Then we went to Bryce and Zion um, in southern Utah. And then we crossed over the state of Nevada on Route 50 and got back to San Francisco. It was a 2,600 mile trip. And I had to buy, for this trip, I had to buy a steel tipped shoes. So I bought a nice pair of steel tipped shoes. And um, so I had, from this trip, I got a pair of steel tipped shoes. And I was using them to kick, kick around in my yard doing yard work. And uh, the sole of my really nice steel tip shoes fell off. 
And so I took my steel tip shoes and I went to the uh, woman who fixes them at the local mall and uh, she's from Armenia. And I said, I need my steel tip shoes. Too. Can you stitch the sole back? And she says, oh, you can't do that. I said, why not? She says, there's no sole. You can't stitch the sole back on. You have to glue it back on. She says, those shoes are terrible. Those shoes are made in China. <laughs> so um, I said, no, 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 no. I said, look, look. And I held up the, the sole. And I said, look, you can see the stitches. She says, those aren't stitches. That's the mold. They make it look in the mold that, like it's a stitch. It's not a stitch. <laughs> she says, those shoes are crap. You can't fix them. She says, I won't fix them. I would never use the glue. The glue smells terrible. I don't like the smell of that glue. Imagine working in that factory in China with the smell of that glue. All those people are just having to work with that glue. She's there, jump, throw them away. And then she says, I have these customers who come in, and they go to the Nordstrom's, and they buy beautiful shoes, and the soles fall off it, just like that. And they come and they say, can you fix my shoes? I said, no, they're junk. They use glue. <laughs> Take over, it's terrible. <laughs> said so, got through that little conversation. I said, what do you think about the future of America? She's about 60, 65, works in the little, you know, just a strip mall. She says, oh, gone with the wind. Just like that. I said, I gotta remember, it's cute, you know. But it's there it is. There it is. You know, in a strip mall, out in the suburbs, woman working on shoes from Armenia in America telling me I bought a crap pair of shoes from a motorcycle trip. It's just, it's everywhere, you know, it's everywhere. But the place that it ain't is sitting there on the, on the Capitol Hill and in the White House. They don't get it. Somebody needs to go and just like rough them up. Just wake them up. Just rough those guys up. So, okay, there's a tire case. I'm almost at a half an hour, not far. There's a tire case. You've heard about the tire case. Have you? Yes, everybody hear about the tire case against uh, the Chinese. It was a big deal. So, the Chinese, the United Steel Workers. I don't know what you think about unions. I, I've gone to places where people just absolutely despise them. They think they've ruined the country. They're the worst things ever. There's nobody else really standing up for American workers. So, union, uh, steel workers union went fought on behalf of their tire workers. They went before the International Trade Commission. The Chinese, here's who the Chinese hired. This is how our government works. They hired James Jochum. He was President Bush's Assistant Secretary of Commerce for Import Administration and the Assistant Secretary for Export Administration. He retired from that position. They hired Andrew Shore. He was the former Chief of Staff of the House Republican Conference. These are the people who were hired to represent China. And the only reason I know this is because I went over to the ITC and I went through the entire transcript. They wouldn't even give it to me. I had to go over to the ITC and I went through the transcript to see who was, who was representing in the legal documents and the briefs and, and the testimony of <coughs> the transcript to see who was testifying on behalf and representing the Chinese. Marguerite Tr Trossavin. She was the deputy, this is her former job, deputy chief counsel at the Department of Commerce's Import Administration. These are the people who are supposed to be in, in the work protecting American jobs and American interests. Stephen Clay, it's another guy who was hired by the Chinese, former deputy assistant secretary for anti-dumping and countervailing duty operations at the Department of Commerce's International Trade Administration. These are the guys who are supposed to represent American industries, American workers in all these countervailing duty operations representing the Chinese. David Spoon was the Assistant Secretary of Commerce for Import Administration from 2005 to 2008. Prior to that, he worked at the, United, the Office of the United States Trade Representative. 